how's it going? Happy Sunday, everybody. Hey, what's up, everybody? Travis here with uh, another inspiring story with one of our uh, one of Laura Rivera's friends, Manuel Ruiz, who's actually the author of our current book club books. So we're super excited to talk to him today and hear his story, kind of hear where he came from and how he how he worked his way into being, uh, you know, successful writer and author and someone that's, you know, now inspiring all the kids that we work with. So I'm going to turn it over to him and let him share his story. So thank you for being here, Manuel, and, uh, you know, take it away. I appreciate it, Travis. Thank you. Um, so my name is Manuel Ruiz. I'm a, I'm a born and bred Texan. I'm originally from South Texas. Um, I was born in a small town, Alice, Texas, but I grew up in Robstown, which is just outside of Corpus Christi. And, um, and I also actually, I know um, a, lot of the, a lot of y'all are from uh, San Antonio. I actually lived in San Antonio my fourth, fifth grade year. I went to Carlos Cunha Elementary when it was a brand new school and the neighborhoods are new and Ingram Park Mall was really new way back, way back when. And I still have ties there. I have two godchildren that live there and some friends. So we get, you know, we get out there to, to do that. And I'm a roller coaster junkie. So I go to Fiesta, Texas as often as I can. Um, I grew up, uh, um, I was a type of kid that loved to read, loved to write. Um, growing up, you know, Wrinkle on Time was my favorite book way back when. And, and as I got older, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. And then I was kind of thinking, but I read a lot of sci-fi. I'm a big Star Wars fan. And so I really did a lot of different things. And I started reading Stephen King way too young. And, uh, <laughs> but really enjoyed that type of scare, horror thing. And growing up in South Texas, a lot of folklore, a lot of, a lot of things, that, weird things that would happen at family, you know, a family house or friends' houses, things like that, the kind of stuff that kind of inspired me. So everything I write typically will have a little bit of a supernatural twinge to it. Um, and the thing is with this book, um, I, I don't know if you can see them here, but I have the two first books I wrote were The Dead Club, which y'all understand finished or about to finish, and Lobo Coronado and the Legacy of the Wolf. This is a standalone. This was the first book I think I actually published, but Dead Club was the first, first one I wrote. And the inspiration for the Dead Club actually came from San Antonio. I was in a, um, uh, a writer's conference, and uh, if y'all know who Rick Riordan is, he's a teacher, used to be from San Antonio, and he writes the Percy Jackson books. And um, he was at this conference, and I'm just, I'm not shamelessly name dropping him, because he, really, he just tied to the story, because he was at the same conference I was, I was attending. And when you walk in, you know when you walk into class, and they have... Um, an icebreaker, like you walk in a math class and they say, hey, do these problems for the first five minutes. Well, one of the sessions I walked into, they said, write a hook, a one or two sentence hook that would make a reader just say, read that and say, hey, I want to know more. So sat down for 10, 15 minutes, jotted it down. And I came out with this young boy dies, he wakes up in the afterlife and he finds that the wonder world's broken and that he and some other friends that came with him were brought there to find out why. Okay, finish the session, finish the weekend conference went home and it just kept bugging me and bugging me in the back of my head and it started building and building. By the time I was, you know, a week later, I was like, I got enough for a whole story here. And I started, and I started writing it. And that's how the dead club was born. And by the time it was over, it was originally just going to be a one book shot. By the time it was over, I'm like, no, 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 I got way more to tell here. It just more popped in my head. And book one took me a long time to get, because it was the establishing piece. It took a while to, you know, coming from there to finishing the book. And by the time I got done and I wrote two, I wrote two and three back to back. They actually could have been one big book, but because the youngest, it's made for middle grade and up to adults. I mean, I have, I have, um, I have readers from all ages, but I couldn't make it too long, especially since the youngest is a younger grade. So I, it's it's why it's broken in two. It does have an ending, book two, but it does it does pick up immediately uh, with book three. So it, it's it's not a full on cliffhanger, but a little bit of one. But it does have an ending, and um, so that's where the inspiration for it came from. And um, so, so again, I got ties to San Antonio, and that's and, and I really am fond of it simply because that's where the story was born. And so and that's and that's what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm a full time. I do have two full time jobs. I write, and I'm also a computer geek. I'm a STEM guy. I have a degree in math and computer science. So I worked for Dell up here in, in the Austin area, Round Rock area, and I worked for General Motors for a while too. And I do the computer stuff. So I haven't. I haven't gotten far enough to say I'm going to quit the full-time job, the, 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 the geek job, <laughs> the computer geek job, but I love what I do, and it gives me time to write, and so I just really enjoy that. That's awesome. Uh, sorry, I, was, I wasn't sure if you were stopping, but that's really cool. And, and what, so you kind of explained, like, what's got you into writing. You were always into mm -hmm. it. Like, what, I guess, what, was there, like, a turning point? You went to school for something different, so when... When did you decide that you wanted to, to be published and how was that, that process like? Well, you know, when growing up and when I started doing this, I was writing since, I mean, I want to, when I was, um, oh, another reference back to San Antonio, the first time I ever got anything 
um, that was kind of a, an, I, um, a, something positive that came from my writing. I was in fourth or fifth grade. I don't remember which grade it was. But at, at the school, at Carlos King, we had a writing contest. And it was the entire fourth or fifth grade. Again, I don't remember which grade it was. And we, we partnered up. We got one other person wrote. And the teachers um, for that grade kind of chose the last few. And it went to the principal and the administration to choose the winner. And me and, and my partner, we ended up winning the whole, whole thing. And so that was, you know, young thing. It was kind of cool. And then as I got older, I wrote a little more poetry. I wrote a little more short stories. Even dealt, you know, dabbed into screenplays. But while I was going to school, even after I graduated and was working, I was constantly taking classes. But this was before the age of the internet. So I couldn't just get on YouTube and look up how to, how to do this or how to write that. Everything was books and, uh, and attending places in person. And so when I first got my first big boy job, I moved to Dallas. I, I lived in Dallas, um, Irving for three and a half years. And there was a good writing community there. And then I relocated to Round Rock, Austin. There's a huge writing community here. So I got really involved in that. I took classes at the local community college and, uh, and as, as um, online started becoming a thing, I started taking classes online. And I wanted, I got published, so I, I, got some, I had some poetry published locally and uh, won another contest with the poetry thing. So, but I liked it, but I realized that, I, as you can tell me talking here, I talk too much. I write too much too. And so I realized that I went from screenplays, took a couple of classes with that, but I knew that once I start writing, it's really, I'm one of those that writes so much, I got to cut it down. And I realized, yeah, I need to try novel, writing novels. And, and the action adventure, you know, when, when you're reading the books, when you got these, you know, especially kids in peril or people in peril, and they're trying to find their inner strength and friendship and all the different things that go with those stories, that still excites me now. And that's why I still write that kind of thing. The series I'm working on now is a little older. It's, it's more YA. And kids are more our high school age on the next series I'm writing, but it's still that same sense of wonder and 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 that that rush of excitement, like oh this is happening or where's this coming from? Throwing a lot more supernatural, throwing a little more scary elements, and that that excites me. And so it's it I went I go with the piece that you need to write something you enjoy or else you're not going to enjoy writing it. And so I, 2015 was when I first got published uh, for my first book, and that was when you know looking into it and 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 learning so much living here in Austin. I've been part of a couple of different organizations here for 15, 20 years, and you learn a lot of the pieces. I found my editor here. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of positives came from being here and just being involved in the writing community. Even there's, there's, I'm, I'm an extrovert. I talk and I'll talk and I'm like, hey, and most writers aren't though. A lot of people are introverted. What I do for a living working in computers, a lot of people are introverted. You can still do that and write. It's just a lot of people join these groups and they're there and they may not say much, but it's what you're absorbing and picking up. And it's, it's kind of saying, hey, I didn't have to, I was still able to get um, the degree and do what I wanted to do, but still do what I do, do what I love. I grew up with writing and music. I'm actually in an 80s band with my brother, and we've been doing that for the last three, four years. So I'm still able to put the art side of me along with the STEM side of me, and then at the same time, it's the reading and the writing that I actually love creating these, these characters. And the feedback I get sometimes from folks saying, hey, this what I really enjoyed about this, or they click, and, you know, I'm at a part where I'm writing, and it makes me sad, or it makes me happy, or it makes me excited. It's a real cool thing when someone else tells me that part made me this, and I'm like, that's exactly how I felt when I was writing it. And so that's kind of what fuels me to keep going. I've got a ton of stories. I've got, I probably got 15, 20 ideas are down, and of those 15, 20, I'd say eight or nine of them will end up being books. I, I've, I've published four already, and uh, the next, the, the next one will be ready by the end of the year. May not be published till next year, timing wise, um, but I should have two or three books out within the next year, 18 months. I mean, that's awesome. I. I mean, out of everything, I think the, the the last thing that you said is probably the biggest, just the fact that you you went to school to do something that you love, but you also get to work on your passion. And I think that, you know, one of the things that we want to do with Transplants for Children and STARS and all of this is to motivate yes. kids to go to school. And we want to motivate you to go to college to do something that you may end up loving. But I don't want people to to believe that just because they got a degree and whether it's computer science or accounting or business or whatever it is, that that's the end game, that that's the end goal. We can still live our passion. We can still live our dream as long as we continue to work on it, right? You Absolutely. Know, that's the key life. thing. You, key word you just said, work. Nothing's going to hand, get, get handed down to you. I worked taking classes on and once, once, and right now, especially in this day and age, you have so many resources available to you. If I were to ask you, uh, what year did um, the Astros win their first World Series or something? You'll find out in about 12 seconds because you have your phone or, 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 or a computer and you can look it up on Google. You can look up, a lot, you know, everything is so easily accessible. And, and so it's just a matter of working at it and then putting in the, putting in the time and saying, I'm, I'm 
I, I, I'm having problems with this kind of thing. Let me go find out how to be better at it. And that's what I've continued to do, you know, from throughout my whole life, taking class. And like you said, and some people have to end up going to college, they get a job that they're bored with and they wanted to do this. Well, there's nothing, absolutely nothing that means you have to stop. You know, hopefully you get something, you do something you love. So hopefully, hopefully, even if you don't like it, don't think that you have to stop. I mean, you just, it's just a matter of managing your time. And, and if you really have the will to do it, I mean, I was a little kid that sat there in San Antonio, you know, and, and in a regular class like anybody else, I listened and I was, I enjoyed writing, I enjoyed reading, and I was able to use that later. And, and I absolutely agree with you 100%. That no matter how tough things might be or, or how frustrating things might be, there's a time, you know, you just have to use your time wisely and, and work. That's right. Yeah. The, and just for, for everyone watching, just remember that education doesn't end with school, right? You just said that you continue to take classes with the age of technology. He just said you can see when the Astros won the first World Series. You can also learn literally anything on the internet right now for almost free most of the time. So don't stop learning. Don't stop trying to grow yourself. Even if you already found your passion, just get better and better because the more, the better you are, the more people you can impact. And that's that's what we all want to do in life is, is make an impact, make people feel a certain way, write a book or, you know, start an organization, whatever it is. So I yeah, think absolutely. That, I've been doing this a long time and I still had to look up the who, whom difference the other day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you're, it's just a constant learning and things you might forget yeah. or not use, but it's, 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 I mean, everything's at your disposal and so much of the stuff is available for nothing. That's yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I, I don't have much else to ask you unless there's anything you'd like to share. I'm going to, wrap us up and you know i hope i hope everyone enjoyed this call because i i've enjoyed talking to you and i i know that some people will get a you know a good glimpse into your side of the world and how you can really you know work towards something even if it's not even if it's not what you decided to do for a living for yes, for your absolutely. beginning yes and thank you and i'm an inspirational what y'all y'all are for um uh, the transplants i'm just just how much med medically how, how many strides we've made i mean i had an uncle my mom's oldest brother when um, you know he he was born with a with a boot a, a boot shaped heart, and he wasn't supposed to live past two, and he ended up you know living till about twenty years old. But he didn't have there were no, he, he wasn't common to have transplants back then, mm -hmm. and so to see how far we've gone medically, it's so inspirational to see you know everybody getting second third chances and and able to do some. So hey, it it it, it and just it's inspirational to know that people are here and that you're doing book clubs and just enjoying it. So it's inspiring to me. And it means a lot to me. And I'm just grateful to be a small part of this in the book club because I had no idea what y'all were reading my book until y'all were almost done with it. So <laughs> yes, it, I mean, I hear something like that and it's just really exciting. That's what I mean. A lot of things you don't know, that you don't see. And I'm writing this book and it's such a lonely thing to do. But then when it goes out into the world and you get this feedback and you hear what's happening with it, it makes it so, so worth it. And, and, uh, and to know that it's inspiring to other people. Hey, I was inspired too. I was inspired by King. I was inspired by Rick Ryder. And I was inspired by a lot of other people. So take that inspiration and, and run with it. Yeah, I love that. Well, thanks guys for being here. Thank you, Manuel, for joining us. And uh, we'll, we'll hopefully see everyone next week for another inspiring story. And if you want to join the book club, uh, shoot us a message so you can join in. And we have, we have some books that we're actually giving away with Manuel's signature for the next two books. So jump on in, send us a message and we'll get you guys going. Thanks for coming in and have a great Sunday. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.